even, even happier because what I want to present here today, um, I think it's related to some of the, the current work in the project. So for me, it's an opportunity to share with you some ideas. Um, I, am, I'm, I am currently collecting some data for the current project on, on, on translingual practices in, in, in higher education. But what you will see today is part of the framework that I am um, I expect to use to analyze these data. So uh, that's what I, I think is, is very useful for me to yeah. I can't see you unfortunately. So I, it's for me it's like I'm more I'll be doing a monologue, but I I mean if you want to say something, I imagine you will you will let me know that you are there. Okay, so um, this project uh, or this presentation today will focus on uh, a work I've been uh, doing for some time, which is looking into the ways in which young people construct their idea of future in their life projects. As you will see, I am trying to engage with youth studies. This is the first time in my life that I, I will be, I'll, I'll do that. And so far, uh, this has been a very amazing experience. I have found out in youth studies a set of concepts, reflections, and perhaps uh, with this combination of, of ethnography and narrative inquiry, I think interesting things might come up. And, and so that's why I'm even happier that you can see this and I'd like to hear your views on, on this. So when we talk about future, future is something that we are concerned when we work with young people. Um, but what I want to say today is that when we ask about the future, what we really are, we are what we are really investigating is the present. And, and this is something that I, it's a principle that I think I, I will, and we can discuss later, and I will show you why I think that. So, um, so the case study that I will be presenting today is just an excuse, as I said before, to uh, uh, put here, to bring here some concepts and theories that I find uh, interesting. So, when we talk about the future, we're talking about aspirations, aspirations um, that, uh, uh, and one of them, or that some some of them are framed as hope. Um, in a way in which we can anticipate our future, or perhaps we are trying to anticipate our future in our biographies, or in the case of these young people, in their biographies. And this is something that I will be also important for me. So this research was part, or the data that I will be presenting today, is part of a project led by Eva Cuyo in La Autónoma de Madrid, the, sorry, the La Autónoma de Bar Barcelona, uh, and I will present the project, and it's about um, the presence of English uh, in, in um, state schools education, I, and I will present that. So we started looking into English and the role of English in uh, young people's lives, but in my case, this project has evolved towards other ideas, not necessarily English, even though I will talk about English a bit uh, more than uh, the other languages. So it was interesting that when we conducted our research, which was ethnographic, um, these were the main ideas that uh, these students, for uh, they, they, are from, they were from a year for the Cuarto de la ESO, so they were leavers. Uh, so they all referred to English. I, I imagine you must be familiar with this literature. Um, it's true that uh, for uh, young people who, uh, whose Eng English is not their first language, the first things that uh, they evoke or that they expect to learn through English is when they talk about music, the use and the use of uh, digital media, social media, Facebook, the way in, in which they engage in social, the social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, etc but also uh, the use of uh, platforms, platforms, streaming platforms to watch 
uh, TV series and, uh, and of course Netflix have, plays an, an important role within this, this world of uh, perhaps learning uh, English or learning languages uh, in an informal way. So this, this, uh, this is a door to, uh, to see a window to see uh, young people's interest, which is not surprising and it's something that has been explored in different parts of the literature. So I thought it was interesting at least to start with this. So this was then the project under, uh, we, I collected these data. It was a project called Aplingo, uh, the Appropriation of English as a Global Language in Catalan Schools. And at that time, this project that uh, was um, active between 2016 and 2019. Um, and uh, what we were looking there was uh, looking at multilingual education in the current Catalan context. Um, more, in, uh, perhaps the most central idea was that we were looking into what is called or known as CLIL or the, yeah, the, implement, yeah, in, the implementation of English as a medium of instruction in a mostly state schools. We know the so-called international schools already have uh, these initiatives, but it was interesting the impact um, for these, uh, for new policies that came into play, uh, into in place, sorry, for um, a state education. So we were interested at that time to see what was going on there. We wanted to explore that ethnographically. We wanted to see, to understand all the language ideologies that emerged in that place. Students that were exposed not only to their languages at home or the language of the school, which is Catalan, but also a third party there, English uh, as a new, um, yeah, party there in, in that uh, uh, state, uh, state education. Um, and we wanted to understand the meanings that the, what was the meaning of English in the lives and of course in, in the, for the particular case of my presentation today, uh, in which what they construct and frame as their future. So, uh, so I will be referring to this project, it was a social linguistic ethnography, even though I will focus today on uh, biographies, on narratives collected within that uh, ethnography, uh, but I think it's it's important to mention that we spent time with them, uh, and that we visited the school, and we uh, I think I will tell let you not in, in a minute. So my work, my analysis, wants to combine what happens in society with uh, what is portrayed in the biographies of these young people. So it's important for me that you understand that these biographies are produced within, uh, on the, uh, within the framework of, of what was going on at that time. Um, it was interesting that in the year 2017, this um, news was there in, in El Pais, um, in which uh, they were uh, summarizing the current situation for young people in Spain. No espais para jóvenes. Perhaps you uh, understand the, um, the evocate, the, what this evoke, which is the film by the Cohen brothers, No Country for, for All People, for All Men. I, yeah, I, yeah, I think it's no, no Country for All Men. But in this case, No Espais para Jóvenes. And there it portrays a not a pleasant or not a positive reality for young people in Spain. So basically what they're saying is that uh, most of the young people at that time were, um, for example, uh, yeah, young, young people were the victims of unemployment or, or employment destruction since uh, they were subject to ha a high proportion of temporary contracts and e uh, they were easier and cheaper uh, subjects to be resigned, of course. So we, we, we see in this report in 2017, all the precarization under these young people were um, growing and, and trying to start a life. Uh, so I think this is an important aspect that we will keep in mind for the analysis and for the theoretical framework that I will be presenting. 
So you remember that uh, in the recent years, uh, apart from this no space para jóvenes, allows us to understand what happened after 2008 for young people and all the so-called brain drain that was um, mostly um, presented by the media. No, that was the media and mostly El País. El País, in fact, created uh, some kind of new category, which was el, el expatriado. So who was el expatriado? It was um, young people with qualifications who had to uh, look to go abroad, trying to find a better, a better opportunities for them. So this noise after nearly 10 years, in 2007, we, we can see how the country was not able to respond to this new group, this new group a cohort of young people who were uh, yeah, trying to find some opportunities. And I think this is an important point that we will need to make. If we think of the current situation, I mean, the pandemic, it's also something that we will need to keep in mind, even though, of course, I, I, will, I won't uh, include this in the analysis today. But I think um, it's related to what I'm doing now for El Greili, for um, it's to, uh, to show how uh, these aulas globales that we are uh, investigating and, and translingual, translingual practices we need to be um, understood within the, these current current affairs, and so I think it's not different from what happened in 2008, but it's it's a better a continuation of those uh, these difficulties for young people. Not only uh, I'm not talking only in Spain, but all the south of of Europe. If we think of that, the situation in Portugal, in Italy. Uh, where we can find most uh, references about uh, uh, life uh, youth uh, in the under the current situation. So yeah, so that was uh, the, perhaps the first uh, so social issue that I wanted to bring uh, before uh, presenting my theoretical framework and the analysis. The second issue is um, what happened uh, in Catalonia uh, in the late, what's so, something that we started in the late 90s of the I mean, last century, and was the, the implementation of new, uh, of, of a third language, you know, and which in the end uh, ended up with this mark uh, plurilingualism. So, uh, yeah, a decade before uh, this economic crash in the late 90s, Spain and mainly the region of Catalonia started to promote the learning of English as one of the languages at schools. Due, context, due to contextual factors, the local uh, Catalan government has paid special attention to the construction of a linguistic educational model that responds to the sociolinguistic situation in Catalonia and that sets the roles that Catalan as la lengua propia, the, la, the own language of the region and Spanish as the language uh, of the Spanish state should play. English um, um, comes into play as one of the foreign languages to be learned at schools. The framework for plurilingualism of 2018 defined the role of English in this way. So we can see here what is the role of, of English that they are given. It's uh, in a way, uh, it's associated to the idea of quality of education, but also associated to ideas of lifelong learning. Um, and also um, a, an, a, under the idea, under the narrative that uh, this, uh, this mark plurilingualism, plurilingualism, would entail um, an idea of Catalonia's own model for plurilingual education. So this was the rationale that the plurilingual framework gave at that time, in an increasingly complex world where society is rapidly changing proficiency in several languages for communication, academic and professional uses is not only necessary, but almost indispensable. Thus, the education system must train plurilingual speakers with different competences in different languages, able to interact in a complex linguistic and cultural context, 
open to the world and able to successfully access, access the labor market. So people uh, have, have seen and have analyzed this, uh, lo the launch of this plurilingual framework as a way of, uh, as an indication of the neoliberal, neoliberalization of the Catalan uh, education system. So I think this is one of the things that we need to keep in mind. And um, mostly uh, when that marginal plurilingualism supported the creation of this new uh, law, the JEP, a group for experimenting um, with plurilingualism, in which English uh, was going to oc occupy a central role there, as, a, as that, that third uh, language important for a uh, things that we have mentioned already, you know, mainly the entrance to uh, the labor, facilitate and encourage the language to uh, the entrance to the labor market. So it is within these uh, social uh, issues, mostly these are the two main societal issues that um, encourage us to conduct this, conduct this research, to look into this, uh, the implementation of this new language policy mainly a group uh, de experimentación para el plurilingualismo, in which English uh, would become the most, uh, the most important foreign language within the education system. And in addition with um, what the society was, um, the, the local society was offering for young people. So with this in mind, we started, we embarked ourselves in a, in a long uh, ethnography. It was an ethnography uh, in which we visited three schools, one, an, one international school, one, one concertado, state-supported uh, school, and uh, a private one. And I want to focus on the, uh, on the state school, sorry, the state school that we visited. We were there uh, for nearly uh, for more than two years visiting them. Um, Eva Kudo mentions in one of her articles that they, uh, as a team, it was a team uh, group, teamwork ethnography. Uh, they visited the school in 47 occasions, 47 times. I think that's a very, yeah, it shows how they, we all spend time with them. I just was there for some a short period, uh, collecting data, and I focused with uh, to talk with the, the students. The school is located in a low middle class and working working class, low middle class uh, city or on the outskirts of Barcelona. Um, and what was interesting about Alspins is um, that this was one of the schools that participated within the that new program, this HEP program. It was a program uh, or a scheme launched by the local government in order to encourage schools to implement English as a medium of instruction. And they were encouraging schools to do it uh, through different initiatives. There was no one way of doing that. Uh, it's what we can call CLEAL or some ways of doing CLEAL. And this school in particular, um, for example, the teachers uh, are for participating in HEP, in JEP, were expected, for example, to have uh, the B2 um, tests, no? the, as, as a result, the English with B2, but also uh, teachers with the capacity to, to teach in a second language, uh, content, content through uh, the second language. Annalspin schools had already, before uh, 2018, they had um, uh, some experience with that. They started implementing, for example, the education of PE in English. And then uh, with when HEP started there, the application of HEP uh, there, they started to offer social science, um, um, sci uh, yeah, social science history, um, social, uh, sorry, science, social sciences, PE, um, and uh, they were, yeah, they offering, they were offering and technology, IT. Technology was offer, also offered uh, in English for some students, not everyone. They created some, so it was, the, it was a kind of, um, um, it, there, there was the mainstream uh, classroom, uh, but there was also uh, this, uh, the same class offered in English 
for those students who who wanted and who who had the English level to participate in these um, in these um, uh, classes. So I think this is an important point. So Alspen School had that uh, experience already, and uh, that's why we were very interested in, to see how um, this HEP was being implemented, that new policy at that time, and the way in which uh, teachers and students were uh, navigating, was, were coping with that implementation. So in, a, in a, an article from 2017, Eva and I reported um, of the struggles that teachers at that time were experiencing with this, the implementation of CLIL. Um, it was successful in, in the front of, of uh, the, the social image of the school, but what we showed it was that the teachers were struggling in terms of, uh, for example, spending uh, time, investing a lot of time um, uh, to learn English and to improve their English uh, and also to create creating new materials, training themselves in order to um, to navigate this, uh, this, to respond to what the school was proposing for them. So th th that's why the, the idea of the second uh, mm, a paper or yeah was to explore the voices of, of the students or what the students had to say about that so this was a yeah the HEP uh, it was a group for experimenting with plurilingualism yeah sorry there, there were the um the classes that implemented that uh, english class uh, english lessons PE, chemistry history and technology so you will see how the students you will see in their biographies when I, I will be presenting the data, how some of them may relevant these days, these uh, issues, no? Some of them, them attend the technology class, some of them have attended in the past the PE class in English, and they all have an opinion. So I think that that's, this school creates a very, very interesting conditions to look at the ways in which these students who attend a state school and they have and they receive uh, exposure to different languages uh, have to say about it. And I think that's why I, I find this uh, case uh, important and relevant to, to, yeah, to the topic. So yeah, this is summarizing. It was a three years lot to visiting, but we, did, we visited in different moments, uh, classroom interaction, ethnographic accounts, interviews, Mm, this, this all, these are the interviews with the students. Um, I normally prefer to interview people in, in groups, um, and this is something that we also do here in, in Rayleigh for different reasons. Um, uh, the, I, I, I personally, I, I like the way in which students share experiences and the way in, in students or uh, share narratives and co-construct these narratives because they have the same or similar experiences. So it's interesting because it, when we conduct group interviews, everyone or yeah, has any, everyone practically has something to say, even to disagree. And I think this is positive about this kind of method, methodology. Instead of interviewing people individually, even though we, or we did it as well, but we tried to capture both individual interviews and group interviews. They were levers, which was important for us because exactly we wanted to see when you are in year four, year four is an important moment, an important transition if we talk about youth studies. Uh, it's a moment when you need to decide if you want to follow uh, the academy, an academic path or if you want to follow our vocational vocational path. So it's an important moment to make decisions. And, and we thought that was the, the best way to collect these, um, these biographies, following uh, yeah, with what people do in youth studies. So these were more or less, these are the questions that I want to follow. Um, they are complex questions and, and you will see that uh, 
each one of them would give us a lot to discuss and that's my idea today so what i wanted to understand today what are the life projects produced by a group of students who as you have seen are expo exposed to clear initiatives and it's particularly students who don't have access to economic resources they are not uh, students who attend international schools or elite schools as we some people call them uh, but students who have access to a general and main, mainstream education and i thought this was interesting you will see for example that some of them were produced what in youth studies people call traditional biographies, but some others produce some other kind of biographies as we will see. The second point I'd like to explore today, what is the role that they give uh, to language and not necessarily English. You will see uh, when, when children, when students are multilinguals, young people are multilinguals, it's interesting the, um, the roles that they give to each language. And is what I'm, I'm saying when, when they talk about the future, they are really talking about the present. And I think that's a, a fascinating idea. And what does all this tell us about current uh, processes and social, social political, economic transformations in, in Catalonia or in Spain, if you want to uh, talk about it? That's what I decided today to draw on, uh, the, the, on the concept of social generation which also is also borrowed from, from youth studies. Something that I need to say is that um, the concepts that I will be using are under too much debate in youth studies. And what I have done is to take what I think is uh, important for what I want to, to uh, present as argument here. So, so this is important. The photographs illustrate uh, some parts of the field work and the one that you can see with the, the a textbook uh, and Im, Im, three images with some activities that uh, image reflects or uh, represents sorry uh, the materials that the teachers created this is uh, an example that the history teacher created for his students they, they, they were talking about egypt uh in the class uh, that my colleagues observed so but i i was looking into the materials and 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 it's fascinating, uh, all the struggle and, and the navigation that they have to do regarding materials. And this is something that we can discuss perhaps later and, and yeah. So then, well, then uh, in order to try to address these questions, I, I, will, I drew on, um, on three concepts. The first one, uh, the, uh, and they are borrowed from youth studies, is the idea of projects projects uh, understood uh, as Dua Raymond, uh, uh, as I said before, uh, is under debate, of course. But I think what is interesting about projects is that uh, they allow us to understand the way in which uh, students project themselves. No projects are drafts for a desirable future, a future which clearly will never become reality in the way uh, it was planned. Of course, that's not the idea. No, when we produce a discourse our, our, about ourselves, we are situated in a particular time and, and space, and this is what we are producing. It's a construction, but at least this construction is an important indication of how uh, you see uh, yourself in the future, but also how uh, you perceive your current reality. The project, therefore, has to be constantly adapted to changing circumstances or abandoned in favor of a new one. So what I like about this concept and the one on social generation that I will present later is the idea that, uh, social, that youth is a social construction and that, um, that it's negotiated and, and subjectivity, the way in which people construct their subjectivity in this case, in these courses, is very central to our understanding of what they understand. It's their own project. Um, additionally, I like the idea from Flanagan that uh, visions of the future uh, of young people are shaped in large measure by what they imagine is possible 
for people like them. And this is what we will be seeing in our analysis, how these kids um, are presenting what they perceive uh, is possible for people like them. And it's what they perceive their own, so what they is available for them. And I think this is a very interesting idea of, of imagination and how uh, imagination works when we plan uh, the future in this particular case, these young people. And, but these ideas will be central for me, yeah? And then my discussion will focus on, on social generation. As I said before, this is um, uh, also a concept that is under a, a lot of debate in youth study, in, in youth studies. But what I like from this concept is precisely the idea that um, we perceive ourselves as cohorts which are different from the previous ones. And perhaps, uh, and I think that's an important thing how how these um, subjectivities some, sometimes are shared as we will see and um, i think generation exists if we uh, believe that we are part of a generation and um, in the case in the case of the kids that we have interviewed and and in the case for the case of the students that i am interviewing now for uh, the project, the current project, Translingualism, it's clear that they have this idea of belonging uh, to a generation. And for that reason, I'm using this concept. I find it really uh, useful in that sense. And, uh, and I like it because it takes distance from um, the ideas of generation from psychology or even from marketing where marketing, we are allocated according to our age, according to the moment where we were born or the time or a, a or day or year to particular ways of uh, generations, generation Z, Y, X, baby boomers. Uh, I didn't know the silent generation also exists, but this is for marketing. Um, 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 purposes, no? So, and now we talk about millennials. So it's interesting that in this presentation, I'm sure we can identify with some of them. Some of you feel I am a millennial or me. I sometimes when I joke with, I make jokes with my students and I call them mil millennial. For my millennial, this is, this, this means this or that. And I think this is a, an interesting thing. But it's how we um, navigate these things. I, I'm, I'm not taking this stance. I'm just presenting how um, some people, especially in, in, in psychology or in marketing, uh, use these ideas. But uh, what has this um, def definition by Wynne and Woodman is precisely to challenge that idea of, of a homogeneous cohort um, and, and our automatic allocation to a generation because we were born at a particular date or time. So no, here for them, this is a social construction, it is negotiated, and sometimes we can find people who have, uh, who are born in different moments, who feel that they belong to a different generation. And I think this is an important thing. That's what I like, this idea that it's, um, it follows the sociological tradition of Meinham. Look, look, okay, this, social generational dynamic firmly within the interaction of social conditions and individual subjectivities. And this is what I will be exploring in this data. These uh, individual subjectivities, these life projects constructed, but also what they perceive, it's available for people like them. So what kind of people uh, they construct themselves, uh, in which way they construct themselves, what kind of people they are. This is a fascinating idea for me. So in the in, the, in this previous in the in this uh, first analysis, uh, I have managed to identify three uh, life projects, and I have labeled them in this way: uh, the academic after starting uh, an analysis, the academic project, the easiest entry to the labor market project, it's a bit long that name, and this one, which I still am trying to find the right label the public servant project or the uniform is the same. Um, but if you can see, it's interesting because it's difficult in youth studies, this is one of the debates. 
if this is this called a traditional or non-traditional biography and what is interesting is that here is is a mixture of both we don't need to label things in a strict way so we, we will see how these uh, students um in at the different kinds of subjectivities, even neoliberal subjectivities, but also traditional subjective. And that's the interesting thing, at least for me. So let's see how each, each one works and, and the things that I have uh, more or less identified. So in order to analyze them, what I wanted to focus then was in the construction of the future that they um, they make, uh, and also to show how uh, in the construction of these, um, these biographies, they construct the ideas of a future and how to anticipate that future. Um, but it's interesting all the, these material that the materialities that they see they see there and, and I, I think okay let's let's try to start with the first group and yeah this was one of the groups Selma Edward and Mateo. Uh, the three of them were from the mainstream class, the top, the top class. They uh, all attended the English lessons of some of the modules, the classes that you that you saw, especially technology. Uh, and yeah, they are academic orientated. They engage uh, in the classes. What I was, what I was saying. Um, they are being engaged in language academies. Some of them, since they were little. Uh, Selma, not Sylvia, Selma, uh, for example, at the moment of the interview, she was trying to have the, the results from, um, I think it was Michigan, from one of the top uh, exams in English. So she's very into English. Um, and they all watch, uh, they all use English in a different way. They watch TV series, uh, they use subtitles. Uh, they follow American YouTubers and um, they all uh, la label English as essential for the future. But the interesting thing is how they construct these things. So in this case is Selma. I, 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 I made a mistake, sorry, with the names. Um, so we can see here in her example, and I, when we ask her about this, and I think that it's practical that we do it in English, because if you think about it as a plan for the future, the word you'll find, I mean, you need to have a good English or a, a good, have a good of English because now the world is globalized and everything is in English. And I think that I suppose that proceeding in the way of subjects in English, well, we like at the beginning really of what will be the future. So Eva, who did this interview, uh, uh, yeah, she conducted this interview. In other words, you see it's, at, it's necessary for the world of work, you know, yeah. What what do you want to study, uh, you guys? What do you want? How do you see the future? So we ask them uh, directly about the future in all cases. And the, one of the boys answered, I'd like to study some sort of subject like uh, economics. And you, Sylvia, science, physics as applied to astronomy. So this girl, for example, we, we, with her, we saw how she was completely engaged in a neoliberal subjectivity. Uh, for example, she constructed a completely a do-it-yourself biography in the way in which, for example, she uh, used all the resources she found uh, to practice her English and to engage with English uh, in different forms. Um, Netflix, uh, chatting, uh, having uh, foreign friends uh, who spoke, who speak English, and all these things. She even saw herself going abroad. This is something that has been studied in youth studies. How uh, young people, some of them, those who enact this or portray these sub uh, neoliberal subjectivities, uh, construct some cert certain um, kind of effect towards or so, some emotions regarding the way that they want to go abroad. So the idea that it's, they have naturalized, the idea that, and, and this girl was one of them. She had clear that she wanted to go abroad and have education abroad and perhaps to live abroad. So, so she was perhaps the most, uh, the one who um, uh, engaged with this biography, the do-it-yourself uh, biography. 
So, <clears throat> yeah, it was interesting how they drew on definitions about what the world is, the future, um, the need to investments so how they anticipating for the construction of that future and how English in this particular case comes into play uh, and here of course they uh, how they position themselves in these narratives in these biographies uh, as academic orientated you know I want I mean they go for economics they, she wants to go for astronomy so they they, they present themselves as academic orientated and, and we saw it in the ethnography in their school trajectories mm -hmm. i like the idea I, I what i like from this one is i'm using that thing's idea of voicing how uh, sylvia is voicing her parents discourse they or adults discourse and i really like that you know, when she says mm, because the now the world is globalized and everything's in english so I think that's an interesting construction of how they are producing these discourses that come from the other, other world. And I, I really like that part. The second group were the easiest entry. That was the second biography. You will see that these biographies are complex. And again, I'm not saying this is black or white uh, because this is one of the discussions in youth studies. Not, this is not too homogenized what they are saying. I'm just saying that uh, some of them even combined, we can find a mix of, of all these biographies. They all are from the mainstream group of English, English in the school, I didn't explain that. Uh, English at school is organized by um, levels, beginners, intermediate and, and intermediate and advanced. The kids from the academic uh, biography orientated they all go uh, to the uh, advanced class. But these kids, Irene, Sara, Pablo and Victor, go to uh, the intermediate and in the beginning, both. I think it's both. They are not necessarily from, they are, this is a mixed group. They all are orientated to vocational training courses. Irene and Sara and Victor, we can see what they want to do. <clears throat> they expand the idea of English for socializing, socializing sorry, and for traveling. And uh, it's interesting that they produce a, a, it's a combination of the um, biography that I will present later, which is the civil servants, what I could call the normal choice project. You know? and, uh, so, and they all uh, believe that English is an asset for the opposition so it's an interesting because it's a combination of traditional biographies they want to perhaps to have this uh, safe life no this the life perhaps their parents had and and they want to reproduce that the previous groups uh, they don't want to engage with that that biography they are changing changing their biography and I, I think this is a fascinating thing so i asked them but now more or less uh, good what's difficult with english what's difficult you will see how these children then these students who are not really engaged with academia, they make an interesting construction of English here. So I am asking them. So, but more or less good, what is difficult with English? What's difficult? And Sarah says, it's not that it's difficult because once you understand it's more or less, you know, it depend, depends on the conjugations. You don't have to do, I mean, the past, all that, the grammar says, right? Yes. Uh, Pablo uh, and Pablo says, well, all day it's more or less the same. I mean, like English and all that, but you like it, great. Carry on. Uh, yeah, but just, just, I mean, I also find it hard, especially conjugating everything. I get really mixed up, conjugating lots of things and, and of my dodgy constructions, says Pablo. What we identified in this data that was fascinating for us is how students perceive that there is an English that is uh, the English from the school, which is similar to maths. It's something in which they need to memorize. It's, it's really a painful experience for them. And it's interesting how they differentiate between, between that English from school from the English for fun. Because all these kids are gamers. They all engage to play video games online with people who don't speak Spanish or Catalan and they do it in english and some they also show us some examples of that it's, it was very interesting even they use whatsapp and they i will present some examples if we have time 
Um, so it's interesting these uh, cat these two categories of English, and it's interesting that they don't see them as they don't conciliate them. They see them as separated, and this is something in which we as teachers should work. It's very interesting this this idea that the English I use outside school is not the English I can use at school. Uh, and why? It's a very interesting uh, thing that I found there when I was doing this. So I asked, I continue, and what do you like about English? I asked Pablo. I, I like it as a language, he says. And it's very interesting because what he's saying here is I don't like it as a subject. I like it as a, as a, as a, as a, as a language. It's a language, but not right, not studying right. As I'm trying to make him to elaborate on his answer. Yes, and you, uh, Victor, the third one. I mean, for me, let's see. Well, it's not entirely rubbish, but I, I'm I'm not entirely rubbish, but I'm not keen on the way they explain things. So I get, it's against the complaint against the way in which they learn the formal English when they're explaining. I'd say, what's this? Right, right. Then what do I know? You look it up, do it up to internet or whatever, and you say, now I get it. You mean you always need to look up, uh, to look for her, right? Yes, yes, I need to do it, what the teacher does. Uh, I just get to uh, or something like that. What I like from Victor is the do-it-yourself uh, biography that emerges here. And it's very interesting how uh, what he's saying is, okay, what I I don't understand, I just go to Google or whatever. So they, they all use these resources, Google Translate. I imagine it's, it's the same for everyone. It's the same with the group of students that I am observing in the global uh, class here, or global classroom in, in La Pompeu Fabra. All of them do it. They, they discuss in one language, but once they have to do something else, they go to Google Translate, World reference and reference and all these things. But it's interesting how these, of course, these subjectivities and this do it yourself is very interesting. So they are able to solve their own problems. This is a very, yes, of course, a neoliberal subjectivity, but I, this is something that we can discuss at the end. And this is the final one. These, those who produce the more traditional in quotation marks, biographies, those who want stability, the, the, the safe life, like, and they just think of their parents, no, my, what my dad, they all are from the flexible group, they are not from the mainstream, mainstream, mainstream groups, mm, they are uh, non-academically orientated, and these are some of their aspirations for the future, they want to be mechanics, police officers, Mossos, Mossos de Squadra, all of them wanted to be Mossos de Mosso Squadra. Uh, marketing uh, and music production, uh, Uriol, one of them. They, but that was very interesting for me. They don't engage academically, but they all are gamers. They all play video games in English. Uh, they use English for socializing. And even all of them have dropped in the case, for the case of Uriol, he dropped out of school um, when he was little and he, he doesn't really like. So again, is the idea of the normal project as Eckersoid in 1994. I will add some ideas about Neil because Neil is a very interesting case within this group. He wasn't there in this interview, but you will see how these um, biographies are not homogenized and they have different uh, complexities there. So the three, the first three guys, the students presented the same uh the same biography you will see so for the future that you want to what you think English is important oh yes yes in what way why is it important because well for example and Nikki says I if I want to be a soldier well basically English I'm sure they'll teach me because it for example they send me to another country so that's interesting how this idea of mobility even if you want this uh, traditional uh, biography. And of course, so in, uh, M Mickey continues, English is spoken practically the world over, yes. So it's better for me to learn English starting now, and that, that's how it is. The thing is, Mickey doesn't engage with English, he's not, not good. Um, okay, so I, I continue to have an advantage there, right, for the CV and you, and you Eric, well, he wants to be a police officer too. Uh, if they have a problem with any foreignness, right? Okay, I need to know to speak. If not, uh, I said yes, yes, at least a minimum. Yeah. Yes, if he imagines himself uh, 
um, capturing yeah, people who are international criminals, and it sounds very interesting. So you can see how this, this traditional biography, in the sense that, okay, they want some, co some sort of a safe life, a security in their lives, a stability, and they all see English as important in their lives. And this is a very interesting thing. However, Neil, who is from the same group, he produced a different idea that I really like and is fascinating to contrast. I asked him, well, you are now in the last year of compulsory secondary education and next year you need to make decisions. Do you think English, English will be useful in life? Do you need English for the plans you have, Neil? And Neil says, not much. Catalan will be more useful for me. Uh, and so that was very surprising. No? Why? Why do you want to? What do you want to do? I want to be a police officer, a most of a squad. Well, they don't ask for English. They want Catalan, right? It needs to be really professional. And this is interesting because it's again the idea that the language at school is not the language that they use in their, every, in their everyday life. Neil speaks Catalan, but somehow he feels his Catalan needs to be professional. I, I made a mistake here and I understood English, but you will see how this is, this is a misunderstanding, but then at the end, I managed to, to get the information. Um, but not, uh, okay, but not English. And you uh, you have a professional English. I made a mistake. I wanted, to, I meant uh, Catalan. Uh, and he continued, you have level C, will you get it? No, I mean, I have some level, well, normal, but, I'm not a professional, I'm not an expert in that language, in, in English. Uh, and then I tried to, you, to go back to Catalan, but when you speak Catalan, and well, it's your second language, and English, do you think you will need English? So he said no, and instead what he makes relevant is he will need some other skills. Um, you can see here, no? Um, I asked him, to be a police officer, don't you think you need it for your CV? Would, would it not give you extra points based based on previous interviews? And he says, no. He, he just stick, stuck with that, is no, I don't need it. Um, so uh, I think in line yeah, 23, I wanted to, to know more. And what else do they ask apart from Catalan? And he said, it depends. I mean, I mean, it's like there's no training course to be a police officer, right? There are tests. And until you, you're, you're 18, I don't think you can start to do them, but you can do training cycles to study more. And then the more you study, the greater your chances of advancing positions. When we continue the interview, for example, that it was much more important for him sports because he, he had to be in good shape if he wanted to be uh, accepted. I don't know uh, the time. Uh, can you tell me? something about time uh, how uh, how are we doing can yeah, anyone almost, yeah it's almost six o'clock so i yeah. nearly i'm um, okay I'm, I'm about to finish um this is the engage uh, some ideas of about engagement but i have already mentioned them and i just want to jump into the idea of generation and how i thought it was a fascinating idea within this data and it started when i started analyzing it was a bit of um um uh, something that happened after i started um, um analyzing this data because if you look at these uh, examples of this interview something happened there in the way in which we adults eva and and i and myself we ask in the way in which we ask to these people to these young people can you see here eva says right when you speak uh, with colleagues and so on do you use expressions in english because I have seen that young people these days, young people sound like an old granny. I sound like an old granny, but I mean, I don't know. They use by way of expressions, right? Oh my God, or whatever. And Sylvia says, ah, yes, they do that. Do you recognize that as a way of speaking? Not in my time. That was, no, in my time, it wasn't done. So can you see how Eva framed these questions? And that this, with this interview, I realized that the way in which we were positioning ourselves in these interviews as researchers, we were positioning as adults and as people from a different generation. And that's why I think 
that concept works very well here because we are presenting ourselves as different from them. And I'm sure you all, those who like you that, that you share my experiences and have been um, ha have understood different cohorts of young people in Catalonia, I, I, I think you, you might agree with me that the engagement that young people have now with English is not the same of young people when you were young on when I came to Spain 20 years ago. I remember that was not the same engagement. People of my age and perhaps generation in, in, in Catalonia, they didn't like to, to watch uh, original version movies, for example. Now these kids, uh, they do it at home with Netflix. Gamers, YouTubers, all these things, they do it in English. So I think this is a fascinating idea and that's what I, I wanted. So, I, that's what I, I put there. Uh, it was an adult's frame, and this is what I wanted to, to say. Uh, this is very interesting of how in our biographies we, we construct this idea of a future, of aspirations, and unfortunately, reality gives us some sort of hit, hits us somehow when we see um, how think, what think, what, what's happening today, and with especially with this COVID-19, it seems no, no, hay pa, no es país para jóvenes, and perhaps it's not, not a continent for, for young people. But um, uh, these are my final thoughts that I wanted to share with you. Uh, of course, I, I tried to present how language becomes a key to anticipation and how they are, uh, the way in which they are presenting language, languages for what? And they are aware. That's what I'm telling uh, the future, talking about the future, talks much more about the present. Uh, the varied language projects, that language, no, uh, I, there's some mistake, there were um, life projects that we um, identified there, complex, more than varied is complex, the word that I should use there. The different ways in which English is perceived and, uh, and used by the students. And perhaps the final one that has to do with the crude reality is uh, that I want to explore in the paper when I write the paper is this idea of Berlin of cruel optimism. When she, I don't know if you are familiar with this concept, I'm just trying to engage with it. Uh, but it's an interesting idea of how sometimes what we desire is not what we can get. And in the end, or we, or we are, if, even though we invest and it's not enough and perhaps we won't get it. Um, so in the end is, is to be realistic about these things. And, and, uh, and I'd like to engage with that. And perhaps we can discuss uh, about this, these issues. And I'm gonna leave it uh, for now, yeah? And if we, we can discuss a few minutes. And thank you very much. Thanks a lot for, uh, listening and for sharing with me this. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Adriana. And uh, I'll turn it over to Soko, who will handle the questions, as we always do. Ah, it was here, Eva. <laughs> good, good. I didn't Thanks. know it's good because, yeah, <laughs> great, great, fantastic. Thanks. I think everybody, yeah, turn on your image. Hello. Yes, please, yes. So well, we have like... Uh, uh, Hello, Probably everyone. like <laughs> I mean. you frame the interviews as an old an old old grand <laughs> an old granny actually, yes. <laughs> I'm just joking. No, but it was it was fascinating when I was saying uh, analyzing and yeah, that's a yeah. fascinating idea. We lost uh, two or three people along the way, but anyway, it's uh, fine. Jauma and Adriana you can turn on your cameras if you want. If you don't want to, yes, that's Yes. For the sake of uh, what else, anyway. Um, anyway, so come. Right. So we'll, I guess we'll have uh, something like 20 minutes or 20 to 30. So if anybody has any questions or comments that they want to make, just feel free to use the raise your hand feature or directly switch on your. Yeah. All right. So, Pau. I believe you have a comment. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Adriana, for your interesting presentation. Um, I think it could be uh, more interesting when we read the paper and when you um, 
elaborate more your final thoughts. But it's a great, a great uh, study. I am interested in something technical. This is the following. How do you manage to uh, include um, kids in their research? Is, is this legal? Do you need some, uh, <laughs> sorry, but I, 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 mean, I mean, for me it's okay, but I'm imagining myself doing something similar and I would like to know if it's necessary to have some permission to do this kind of research. Of course, there's an ethics process which is very rigorous and all the universities demand from us in the UK, it's a big, big topic. It's something you can't start, you can't even contact your participants without uh, your university needs to approve uh, the ethics and you need to present, make a case. It's a long paperwork thing. And um, I'm thinking that if we all speak Spanish or Catalan, perhaps we could change language. Are you, are you okay with it? Same. Yeah, I was going to no, say the same um, social generation you know yeah. Pero la gente hay, hay que cuidarla éticamente y es parte del respeto hacia las personas. Mm, sobre todo cuando son menores de edad, incluso los padres tienen que, no es solamente la escuela, los padres tienen que mm, estar de acuerdo. En este caso nosotros no incluimos a los estudiantes como investigadores de, de sus propias prácticas, pero en otros grupos lo hemos hecho, en otros eh, proyectos. En otros de donde estuvimos Eva y yo también en... Ahí los jóvenes sí estaban incluidos como investigadores. Ellos recogían sus propios datos y los traían e incluso llevaban, por ejemplo, cámaras a sus casas. Todo ello tiene que pasar por un proceso de escrutinio de, de, de cómo, primero, ellos tienen que entender para qué es la investigación y cómo se van a usar sus datos. También tienen derecho a que sus, bueno, es obligatorio que sus nombres sean anonimizados y sus datos personales. La escuela fue anonimizada en nombre del instituto, en nombre de los docentes y en nombre de los alumnos. Todo, todo ha sido anonimizado. Sí. Es parte del cuidado ético que es obligatorio al trabajar con seres humanos. Sí, sí, sí. Hay una... Gracias por la información. Supongo sí, sí. Que, que cuando, hace, cuando se hace etnografía con adultos, en catalán, ¿no? Cuando está etnografía a Madus, es diferente que a menos hoy. Bueno, es igual, es igual. El que pasa a Jovas es que, um, claro, te mes, eh, la idea de vulnerabilidad es allí también porque no sabes y los nanos, pues sí, son, son menores. Pero a Madus es lo mateix. Tú uh, tienes una responsabilidad a la llena has de tener una responsabilidad y, por ejemplo, si una persona no vol participar, la persona te dret de retirarse. Eso es una de las cosas que la llen, la llena designa una cosa que es de un consent form y ahí se le explica todo que eso es voluntario, que la seva participación es voluntaria para que se utilizarán las sebas eh, paraulas o im, im, imágenes y si las cosas que utilizan de él, que conta con, da, con dadas, ¿no? Um, y, pero que él se en el derecho de retirarse con bullying, si no están, eh, si no se sienten cómodos, todo eso, si la gente de se saca mena de um, punishment, de de cómo se dice punishment de castigo, de castigo no sí y a es muy delicado si tú trabajas a más teus estudiantes porque de vagadas el estudiante puede pensar que las sebas eh, mar eh, calificaciones mar eh, no cómo se dice las notas las con las notas pueden pueden ver se pueden ver ahora afectadas a yo no es por fe por ejemplo nosotros no decimos que aquí la gente trabaja a más los estudiantes no pueden hacerlo, porque ya unas relaciones de poder que tú has de, 
de negociar. Y els participants, els que compten o construïm com a participants, han de tenir el control de la seva vida i de la seva de la recerca i tant. Al final, el que normalment es fa és que es comparteix la informació que es publica i els poden dir que no estan d'acord. Ens ha passat que no estan d'acord o tal i ja tu entres a intentar negociar amb ells, però no, això és... Sí, la part ètica és molt delicada. Quan fem etnografia i qualitative research en general. Sí, no, anava a dir afegint una cosa que, clar, un investigador està en una situació bastant de vulnerabilitat perquè un projecte que vam acabar l'any passat quan encara treballava a la Universitat de Lleida, teníem entrevistes amb profes, també amb alumnes i tot això, però sobretot el que teníem era, bueno, sobretot una part del projecte era gravar en vídeo algunes classes, o sigui, diguem que la signatura amb 25 sessions, potser 5 o 6 sessions o fins a 10 en algun cas. I clar, vam pensar, clar, hem de tenir permís de tothom present perquè ho podem gravar. Què va passar? Jo me recordo d'un grup, hi havia una noia, només una noia que es negava a signar per això. Clar. I jo estava allà intentant convèncer-li que també era una mica fort, no? Perquè què li he de dir? Que no passa res, no sé què. I al final vam acabar les càmeres, o sigui, teníem les càmeres allà posades i tot, doncs vam dir, bueno, que no ho gravem, i ja està, retirem les càmeres. I després es veu que va parlar amb alguns companys de classe i va venir després un descans que vam fer a mitja classe, va dir, bueno, és igual, dono el paper i el signe. I menys mal, perquè jo no... Jo em trobava una situació intentant convèncer-li que tampoc em semblava bé. I aleshores li vaig dir dues o tres coses, ella es negava i dic, bueno, doncs ho deixem i ja està. Però ens creava una situació només per una persona. I a més a més la seva... No tenia raons molt clares, no? Però no, perquè ella dic, bueno, total, la teva Espanya apareixerà, per exemple, en algun moment. Però no... Vull dir que no estem enfocats a tu. I si a sobre, si aquest cas en què treballessis en grup i volguessin gravar, doncs si realment no vols aparèixer, si vols la teva cara, no vols que aparegui així, doncs no fer això o suprimir després, no? I tal. Però vagi, era una mica... No l'esperàvem, no sé per què, perquè en algun cas algú podia dir que no, no? Però és això, o una persona que retira després una entrevista amb alguna universitat boníssima, ja t'ha inscrita i tot, es posa en contacte amb la persona que li havia fet l'entrevista una setmana després per dir estava rumiant el que havia dit i no sé què, doncs no em sembla bé algunes coses que vaig dir i preferiria que no s'utilitzés l'utilitzés de l'entrevista. I vam perdre aquella entrevista que era boníssima, no? Perquè una persona parla de la política universitat, la política lingüística universitat, no? I, bueno, són coses així que passen, no? Però això són coses petites, però és veritat que quan més jove, més complicat és. I me recordo al Regne Unit que havíem de tenir, estic parlant de fa 20 anys, demanaven informes a la policia. I si és el cas, és origen. Clar, no és denunciable. Sí, sí, clar. Sobretot per a pedòfils, no? Que havia... Clar, sí, sí, sí. I això era molt fort. Després van fer una cosa així, no sé si han fet això a Southampton, que van habilitar tothom, no sé com, van fer uns... O sigui, internament van fer això i després ens avalaven la universitat, no? Per dir que podíem entrar a les escoles i això s'acceptava, no? Però era jo, aleatòriament, algú deia, em va dir un dia, per què no vens a la meva escola a mirar, bueno, t'ensenyo l'escola i tot? I jo vaig dir, espera, perquè he de mirar si realment puc, si estic habilitat per fer això. I al final va ser possible, però sí que molt control, sí, sí. Perdona'm. Sí. No, no, però és veritat, no, però això és important. I clar, és denunciable i és que el tema de l'ètica és part d'això, o sigui, és part de fer recerca qualitativa i sí. I hi ha maneres d'esborrar. Per exemple, nosaltres de vegades... El que fem és que distorsionem la veu o blur la cara, esborrem una mica. Sí, sí, sí. Jo ho faig, això. De fet, tenia una altra pregunta, si puc. Sí, sí, sisplau, sisplau. No, perquè 
a mí me agrada, siempre me agrada las entrevistas, me agrada mucho la dinámica de entrevistas, siempre pregunto cómo, cómo era y tal, ¿no? Y, y estaba pensando que de verdad hacían cosas que soptan en medio de la entrevista, o tan adonas una cosa como aquesta que tenía la Eva a um, la show de Save Age, ¿no? Si nosotros somos sí. Cosas, ¿no? Pues, sí. Pero, utilizan el inglés de una otra manera, ¿no? Me recuerdo una otra entrevista de la Eva que va a aparecer una publicación sobre un italiano que va a entrevistar. Sí. Me hacía mucha gracia que en medio de, de la transcripción, pues el tío dijo, no, estaba en castellano, y dijo, no sé qué, no sé cuántos, y después dijo, joder, y eso de joder aparece. Joder. Es difícil de traducir, ¿no?, al inglés. ¿no? Sí. Uh, y, y, y no sé, que es una mica la, la persona, tú eres una persona, o sea, que a mí me gusta la entrevista pensar que es una conversa, ¿no? Que no es un... Sí, un, sí. Es un de minar, ¿no? Sí, es, sí. Y, bueno, a yo va a ser una cosa del proyecto, que, que era clave, del proyecto de recoger las dadas de manera... Uh, la, lo más espontáneo que es pudir dentro de entrar en una situación como aquesta, pero y para eso el grupo eh, interview a mí me agrada más para eso porque el permite dir a yo, ¿no? Así como os digo, en, a mí me agrada eso, pues a mí no me agrada y está bien. No, especialmente cuando volen a hablar de los docentes, es muy marco, porque yeah. no tú con volver lo maté y es muy interesante las discusiones que. Mm, yo sí, también, sí. pero vosotros, no sé, que tenía una cierta edad, que no es la misma cierta edad que tenía yo, y que, <laughs> que en un momento, supongo que al comenzamiento de hacer cerca, pues a un grupo así de gente secundaria, la diferencia de edad no era tan. Y a las horas, la propia mena, la alumna, era de una manera. Supongo que estoy pasando ya una fase en que ya no es dona a estas circunstancias, si yo lo puedo decir, ¿no? Y en el meu caso, pues, a lo mejor ya estoy como un avi, ¿no? Y, y eso, es un, eso también es una otra cosa muy, muy, muy importante, ¿no? Las entrevistas, ¿no? De, de, de pasar una cierta igualdad, ¿no? A nivel de vida del mundo. O si tienes 10 años más, también encara puedes vender una mica una persona joven. No? Mm. Yo sé por el Víctor, las secas del Víctor, ¿no? Al, al sí. Eh, no había tanta diferencia entre los chavales, sí. no? o sea, era como de no. años, o sea, y sí. él le agradaba la mateja música y tal, y él mm. se podía conectar a mes. Sí. Pero fue poco que estaba sí. para la mesa, y Víctor, tú ya eres un bebé, ya es que tienes capaz de 40 años, ¿no? No puedes sí, presentar sí, a los sí. jóvenes así, ¿no? Sí. Y, y no, eso es adonarte, ¿no? No sé, son... Así que, hablando de etapas de la vida, ¿no? De los alumnos, pues también los proyectos, ¿no? Los futuros investigadores, ¿no? Sí. Es un, un nuevo universo, ¿no? Con la... Sí, pero por eso es la idea de la social construction, porque, porque una cosa muy maca que va a pasar es que nosotras, primero, había de, de challenge, desafiar la idea de que eran docentes. O sea, si somos, son grandes... O, a ver, el, el nano se categoriza en tú a la entrevista. Tú eres una adulta, ¿vale? Pero nosotros sabíamos de crear que esta idea de... Bueno, yo, yo soy, soy gran, pero no soy la teva, Ducen. Yo no tengo poder sobre tú, ¿sí? ni tampoco ni de rey. Yo, es que no te conecto tampoco. O sí, sea, que el teu nom, de vagas, nosotros les invitábamos si volían si cambiar los noms a la entrevista, porque no nos interesan los noms. Yeah. Al que nos interesa es el que él... Uh, cómo es construction y a que esta construcción del futuro o del, del youth. Uh, y después ya con ahora todas las entrevistas, claro, la Eva va a ser salient, pero al final eh, todas dudas estaban en lo materia. Cuando yo era petita, cuando yo era petita, yo les, yo les hablaba en castellano. Sí. Cuando yo era petita, cuando, cuando yo era pequeña, claro, lo que pasa es que mi niñez no fue en España y eso era muy interesante sí. para mí. Sí, sí. Porque no era la materia niñez y yo no, y a Ashon pusaba una mica, era muy interesante, sí, sí. Uh -huh. Pero sí, sí. ¿Tú aquí alguna cosa? Ay, sí, Eva, sí, es plau. Después de que me has dicho bella y de todo, David. No. <laughs> no. Pero es muy interesante eso, eso que veías, ¿no? Y alguna vez me he preguntado, ¿tengo una manera particular de hacer entrevistas, no? Y es interesante porque, claro, cuando le llegues los manuales sobre cómo entrevistas y no sé qué, siempre te digo, la entrevistado ha de hablar el menos posible, ¿no? Pero eso es contrario a la idea de que el que estás haciendo es una conversa, ¿no? 
Sí, sí. Fer una conversa has de aportar alguna cosa también mm. a la entrevista, ¿no? Mm. Entonces, siempre siempre les dedica a los alumnos, ¿no? No, no, no. Aquí esta idea yeah. de que el entrevistador ha de... <laughs> al que sí. no has de hacer preguntas es viejadas, ¿no? Pero claro. tú has de hablar, es decir, es una la manera de que la persona se senti cómoda es que no se senti que le estás haciendo un interrogatorio, de fe, ¿no? Mm. Es el, el que dio el David que no es usarle la máquina de la verdad, que me agrada la teba idea, David, que vas a usar en algún yo tú. Ok. De, de que no es ponerle el, al, al interlocutor la máquina de la verdad. Oh, ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. No estás, tú, tú has dit, ¿eh? Sí, no me recuerdo. <laughs> tú has dit, tú has dit, ya, yeah, es verdad. <laughs> sí, sí, has dit. Um, <laughs> pero es interesante porque... Claro, de, de vagas pensaba en el gran manual aquí de, de how to ask questions. Ah, no. sí. Ay. Ya, de vagas le pregunté a la gente cosas que él más han pensado. Mm -hmm. Y a vos tú le has de ayudar a una zona, no, no de una la respuesta, pero sí, y para eso yo pienso que si tú ilustras a la teva vida, es muy importante porque la gente ya tiene una idea sí, sí. del que tú vos, eh, del mini making, de que, que tú esperas. O sea, que yo, yo pienso que se ha de hacer una conversa con vosotros dos y con la Eva y, y tú, ¿no? De, de, se ha de hacer una conversa y si no, no, mm. no, la entrevista no funciona, ¿no? Es un semi-structure interview, I'm against semi-structure sí, sí. interview. Sí. La, también la. que pasaban aquí estas entrevistas que tornan a la idea que estaba la generación y algunas cosas que veías tú, David, ¿no? Es que, claro, que nens tenía la, la edad del, del meu fill gran, ¿no? Y a las horas, claro, de alguna, de alguna sí. manera, yo sí hablaba en mails de cosas que yo veo que los meus fills fan, ¿no? Sí. Entonces, bueno, claro, y aquí, y aquí es para eso que me posiciono, ¿no? Como la Mara, porque sí, la Mara. era de la mateixa sí. edad, ¿no? Es verdad, es verdad, es verdad. Y a las horas, aquí es el sentido que tenía para mí el que él estaba a diez, ¿no? Desde la nueva experiencia vital, ¿no? Digues sí, sí, sí. Ah, pero es muy interesante eso que deías, más allá, ¿no? Y a proyectos, yo digo que el proyecto que está en Fenara, al PUC P, porque tiene los fills que tienen la edad que tienen y tienen muchos amigos. <coughs> que han fet, no, a, a investiguem, bueno, parlem amb aquestes famílies, no, que envien nens a fora durant un sí. any o durant un trimestre, no, però clar, la xarxa és tan gran, o sigui, que aquest projecte el puc fer ara perquè els meus fills tenen l'edat que tenen i perquè tinc una xarxa de contactes molt gran, no, vull dir que és molt interessant com algunes coses són possibles en alguns moments de la vida, alguns tipus de recerca i alguns altres no, no, mm. però aquesta intersecció entre la vida i la recerca és molt, molt es muy, muy sí, interesante. Es muy importante, es muy interesante. Habrían de escribir algo. Seguro. No, no, porque de fe en recerca de cosas que, que nos tocan de alguna manera. Exacto. ¿no? Exacto. A mí la edad me está tocando. O a la edad a mí la edad me está tocando. Pero, yo, pero también es la idea de exacta. Yo ahora también, ahora que la meva nena tiene un grupo, también la charcha se está ayudando para recoger las edad. Es muy interesante que te... Sí, sí, sí. El Pau, el Pau encara no te que estas cosas, ¿no? No te no te ¿Qué okay, Pau, qué 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 fas tú, Pau? Es que es la teva de ser que es cuánto No, es para, es para, pero Ah, de, a no nivel familiar, a nivel familiar su pare desde fa 7 meses. Oh, no, 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 pues sí, ¿Coneixeu el seu llibre? Que va fer un llibre a la meva sèrie això sobre el material didàctic i mirar el cas de català que és superinteressant. Molt bé. Molt bé. David, avui m'ha arribat aquest llibre, mira. Ah, sí, ah, sí. Wow. També, sí, sí. sí. <laughs> Qué bo. Aquest, uh... sí. M'ha arribat avui, eh? Sí. Qué bé, qué bé. A mí a jo havia, a mi, a mi m'havia ofert una copia dura y una copia electrónica y, y no me aclaré la electrónica para hacer el des, descargar y después a mí me ha llegado una segunda copia de eso, no sé qué hacer ah, 
Wow. <laughs> sí. Y una otra que surti también de John O'Regan, que es súper interesante, es sobre el inglés. Bueno, de hecho es político de economía pur, ¿no? Que ah, la sí. La economía está, está muy bien. Ha trigado mucho en Perú, pero está muy bien el libro. Es muy bien. Sí. Ah, está muy bien. Estos dos han surtido ahora. Sí. Ah, qué bien. Sí, ya me miraré. Sí, sí, sí. Ah, entonces los demandaré a la biblioteca. Sí, yo también. Sí, sí. sí. Adriana, yo te quería preguntar para qué concepto que has comentado, que yo no entiendo gaire. Um, ¿A qué concepto el optimismo cruel? Sí. El optimismo cruel es de una dona que está llenada. Es ella fa emotions. Es ah. filósofa y fa también cosas de, de arte. Y ya vos, eh, el, que ella, el que ella muestra es cómo de vagadas als, lo, las cosas en las que nos embarcamos en deseos son encima de ellas obstáculos para, para alcanzarlos. Okay. Por ejemplo, eh, de vagadas de, de se llama alguna cosa como um, bajar de peso, pero my fem la dieta. O sea, como los, de estos objetos que deseamos nos obstaculizan. Y eso te da ver el neoliberalismo, concepciones de, de la estética y de la... Y para eso yo creo que aquí encajaría muy bien, porque yo creo que aquí y hay una cuestión del deseo, pero es que es un deseo que bien, es, bien estructurado, mes por el palspar, desde la, desde la estructura, obviamente, pero que no pero no porque los nanos realmente necesiten a yo. Para yo me agrada tan el caso del Nil, porque Nil es el único que no entra, o sea, no pueden decir que no es neoliberal. Para mí es neoliberal como la resta. De la idea de la competitividad, de la idea del anticipation, de la idea del do it yourself, o sea, él continúa más que esa subjetividad, pero no entra en el inglés como, uh, como, el, como la manera de... de a rival que voy y para eso me agrada y a mí para mí es para Beura eh, en definitiva es Beura como al final eh, claro que estos deseos tienen a ver una materialidad que de la que no perlen de la que no pero que veían que las noticias y el que está pasando es el gran obstáculo para para que el futuro no eh, que envision la gente que que, que vol, y a mí me agradaría intentar enganchar a que esté idea del cruel Cruel, sí, sí. Uh, yo la, la trovo mol, I, I, I buy it, I buy it, I la trovo mol convincent, y sí. Y me cae good yelling, es que estoy ahora yelling, social generation por toda la, y, es, y me cae good para ahí, para una, sí, sí, y me ha me encantado, me ha encantado, estoy súper encantada. Mm. Bueno, yo, sí, sí. Vale. Pero es muy vale. interesante cómo que está el Youth Studies, es todo ese debate. No sé si vosotros pues, tenéis experiencia leyendo sobre es todo ese debate, todo, 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 la idea de Youth, la idea de Agency, la idea de Transition, o sigue sea, FAPO, ¿eh? Pero, la, pero al Matej Temps es muy interesante porque, claro, eh, avance tenía que vivir en transición, si no sé qué, y claro, pero ahora, ¿cómo explicas eso? No puedo como Jane y sabe que todo el mundo va a tener la mateixa transición a la mateixa edad y es muy interesante todo eso. Por eso la idea del proyecto me agrada porque, porque es el que tú puedes construir ahora, pero cambiar. Es un draft de la teva vida, ¿no? Y por eso un mm. trobo muy convincente y, y me agradaría así tirar, tirar por ahí, ¿no? De... Mm. Y ya está. Bueno. <laughs> Um, pues gracias y a vosotros, gracias, gracias a todos por asistir y que, que bueno, fins de aquí cuatro semanas tienen una otra sesión fenomenal uh, no digo aquí porque he de, final, he de finalizar eso hoy, pero creo que será de aquí cuatro semanas y Muy ya, ya veremos la información genial ¿Eh? Entonces, y, y, sí. bueno, pues, ya un a saber muchas gracias